Ezra and to a lesser degree Nehemiah seem to have a good deal in common with Chronicles and therefore may derive from the same author. So sometimes in secondary literature you will see references to the chronicler, which refers to the hypothetical author of First and Second Chronicles and Ezra and possibly Nehemiah. The chapters report the initial return of the exiles, the rebuilding of the temple, the career of Ezra, and the career of Nehemiah. All four of the books were probably edited in the late 5th century BCE, maybe close to the 4th century, it's our best guess, when Judah was a small province still within the massive Persian Empire. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah, however, contain conflicting information about the return, about the restoration, and as a result, our knowledge of the timing of various events is quite poor. It's really not clear who returned first to help rebuild Jerusalem, whether it was Ezra, a priest, or Nehemiah, a scribe. He was Persian, not a scribe, he was the governor. Ezra was a priest and a scribe. Nehemiah is a Persian-appointed governor of Judah. And even though the chronicler dates events according to the year of the reign of the Persian king, the king is Artaxerxes. And unfortunately, there are two kings named Artaxerxes in the 5th century, and there's one in the 4th. So it's extremely difficult to figure out when these events happen. So keeping in mind that even the experts cannot agree at all on the sequence of events, we're simply going to look at the career of Ezra, the career of Nehemiah. I'm not going to claim priority for either of them. And because the events are not presented in chronological order, even in the books, I'm going to skip fairly freely around between, back and forth between the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. So the book of Ezra <laughs> opens with Cyrus' decree, which we've heard, and then provides a long list of the exiles who returned to Judah after 538. They're led by Sheshbazar. Sheshbazar, and then among the exiles, he says there was Yeshua, who was a priest, and Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was a grandson of King Jehoiachin, who was the last Davidic king who'd been kept in house arrest in, in Babylon. He had been among the exiles in 597. He eventually had been released from house arrest in, in Babylon. So now his grandson, Zerubbabel, a, a Davidite, was returning to Jerusalem. And you can imagine that this would have stirred uh, hope in the hearts of many. Chapter 3 of Ezra describes the sacrifices offered on a rebuilt altar and the beginning of the process of rebuilding the temple, probably around 521 or so. When the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, priests in their vestments with trumpets and Levites, sons of Asaph, with cymbals, were stationed to give praise to the Lord as King David of Israel had ordained. They sang songs extolling and praising the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love for Israel is eternal. All the people raised a great shout, extolling the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord had been laid. Many of the priests and Levites and chiefs of the clans, the old men who had seen the first house, the first temple, wept loudly at the sight of the founding of this house. Many others shouted joyously at the top of their voices. The people could not distinguish the shouts of joy from the people's weeping, for the people raised a great shout, the sound of which could be heard from afar.